Perfect. Perfect. What is going on, everybody? RB here. Welcome to Philly Take with RB. You guys know what to do. Go ahead and smash that like button. Hit the subscribe if you're new and ding the notification bell so you're instantly notified whenever I upload or go live. Today, we are back. And just moments ago, I got finished listening to Nick Sirianni's opening press conference as the next head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And we're coming at you with my instant thoughts, reactions, observations, uh... My gosh, let me just first and foremost say, um, that was interesting. That was definitely interesting. This man right here came up to the podium. Uh, actually, first, before we get to that, just a, a side note real quick on Jeffrey Lurie. Uh, my gosh. I mean, we were 20 minutes into this thing waiting and waiting and just the anxiety levels rising and just let's hear our new man let's hear our guy and Jeffrey Lurie just kept babbling and babbling and babbling like come on Jeffrey Lurie's talking about every which way every issue every literally every coach that we're losing gain everything that's going on in the world it's like okay Jeffrey I understand but at one point I was like is this Jeffrey is Jeffrey Lurie coming out and getting introduced as the next head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles I thought he was going to do a 180 and, and announce that Howie Roseman's about to get hired. <laughs> but anyway, um, getting past that, on the Nick Sirianni, we didn't really get much out of this. As I, I mean, I expect that we wouldn't have, but man, was Nick Sirianni nervous in this press conference? That is my number one takeaway. Um, now, let me first and foremost say, let me be fair here. A first-time head coach, a guy who's 39 years old, taking the stage for the first time as a head coach in the NFL, uh, standing in front of the Phil well, virtually standing in front of the Philadelphia media. To be honest, I would probably be nervous as well. I mean, this I was kind of cringing at some points because it, it reminded me of like, you know, giving a presentation in front of the class. That those are the kind of vibes I felt up here, and I tweeted out, and literally, um, I think it was probably my best tweet in a while. I said Nick Sirianni has seemed to have caught a case of the Doug. Peterson at the podium. I mean, stuttering, uh, you know, this, uh, we got to evaluate and this and that. And it was like, my gosh, was this guy nervous, but I'm not going to just judge this guy off of one press conference. If I'm not mistaken, Doug Peterson was a little, a little bit awkward as well in his first press conference as a head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles. So I'm not just going to come up here and say that Nick Sirianni is done. He's by the wayside already. No, a guy's ability to lead a football team is completely different for his ability to talk and have public speaking skills. So, look, Nick Sirianni, uh, he was asked about Carson Wentz, Jalen Hurts, and um, Jeffrey Lurie, by the way. I feel like Lurie kind of kept taking shots in his long opening uh, statement there at Doug saying, you know, we need a leader. We need a guy who knows the X's and O's and knows the ins and outs and knows every little intricacy of running a football team. That's kind of how I felt personally. But Nick Sirianni got in and he gave this little, this little rah-rah memo like, yo, you know, I'm 39 now. I get to run a team and and it's all about, he kept referencing like this five-factor model um, <laughs> that I feel like I'd have to memorize. And he's like connecting and accountability and it, it sounded good. It sounded good. He's, you know, he seems like a good guy. He seems like he's going to get in here and really try to, you know, build the base, establish relationships with these players. And that comes before anything else. Um, he was asked multiple times about Wentz and Jalen Hurts and the whole situation. And every time he deflected it, I wouldn't expect him to answer, come out right away like this is our guy. No, he even said it himself. He hasn't watched tape. He doesn't have any experience yet. He's got to go back and really break it down. Um, now, he did thank Jeffrey Lurie. He praised Howie Roseman a lot. I, You know, he has to do that. But it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, what am I listening to here? From Doug's ending press conference to this one, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, we didn't get any answer. Now, he did say something at the end. Um, I forget. I think it was... It might, I, I forget who asked him the question, but it kind of caught him off guard. And he was like, well, if you guys saw the one-on-one -on -one interview the other day with Dave Spadaro, um, he sounded very confident. And that's kind of why I was thrown off the bus. Lit. That's why I was like kind of surprised. Like, is this the same guy? Um, but the other day he said, you know, it's a luxury to have two quarterbacks. He, you know, you get to utilize both. And then today near the end, he said, we're going to have to figure out a way to win with each quarterback. Now, I think he was just trying to get through the press conference and they kept asking him about when 
Wentz and Hurts. And he just said, I can't really disclose any conversations like that. Um, he says he's spoken to the quarterbacks. He's spoken to players. Uh, the one thing that he has preached the other day in his one-on-one, -on -one, as well as throughout this press conference, that I actually did like. And by the way, I do think he did say some clear, concise things that really are essential, uh, but it was just kind of hard for him to get it out because he was stuttering and tripping over his words. You know, a lot of the hand movements, he was very nervous. He was very, very nervous. Um, and I, I can't blame him that much, but, you know, things are going to get tougher. And, and I hope as we get throughout the season, as he stands in front of a locker room full of grown men, he's going to be able to hold himself. Um, but he did say that, the talent needs to fit the scheme. Like, you have to adapt what we're trying to do based on the quarterback, based on the running back, based on what we have. And I feel like Doug Peterson never, ever did that, especially this past season. How many times were we saying we have a stud running back, we got to run the ball more? How many times were we saying we have a quarterback that can throw from outside the pocket, we got to roll him out more? I feel like we never did that, and it seems like uh, Nick Sirianni can really um, – you know, really hone in on what each player and what each position group does well. And I hope he kind of tailors that to the kind of offense we run. Now, he was asked somewhere about our philosophy, and he said, based on Indianapolis, how they had three different quarterbacks, he said, you know, it's going to be ever-changing, and again, we have to change it off the personnel. I don't know. Some of these answers, it was kind of weird. Like, I wanted him to come out with a direct answer. You know what I mean? Like, they asked some, uh, uh, Ruben Frank asked some, is this a winning team? How long until this team, What what's the timetable until this team can be a winner? And he, he referenced pretty much the Sixers, maybe not on purpose, but he said, you know, we got to trust the process. We're still evaluating our players. We're still uh, collecting our coaching staff and we're still kind of building the foundation. But, you know, I, I, I understand it, but I still wanted him to come out and say, like, we're going to win. Like, we, we're expecting to win. We're going to come out and we're going to work hard. And, you know, we're going to put this thing together. Um, in a short period of time he was also asked about his ability to play call how that's all going to work and you know is he going to be the forefront obviously he said he does plan to to call plays a couple days ago in the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but he, he kind of said it's a collaboration effort. He said every guy gives their input. He said in Indianapolis, um, he used to, you know, kind of give his input to Frank Reich. And he talked about Reich and all these guys that motivated him and helped him throughout college and, and all this stuff. Um, and he pretty much just used that as the reason why he's ready for this situation. Um, again, he seems like a really good person in terms of developing relationships. Uh, hopefully he will be able to kind of mesh this team together because it almost seems like Doug, lo I mean, he kind of did lose the locker room this past season. Um, Another thing that he said that I really liked was, you know, you got to connect. You got to keep moving in the bad times. Like, even when things get hard, I want to be able to coach these guys in the good times and the bad times. I don't want to ever kind of lose my grip and lose my place, and I, I want to continue to come together. I liked him saying that because I feel like, you know, when things kind of went south this year, it seemed like the whole fortress was just blowing up. So... I was happy about that. He talked good about our new defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, who we brought over from Indy. Some of the other coaches are our, our new quarterbacks, coach Brian Johnson. Um, and overall, like he just talked everybody up, you know, as he was supposed to. He did, he did the things he was supposed to um, in this press conference. And I, I think he did all right. Um, other than that, he really did not say much. He kind of just said the same thing as his same five factors like accountability and connecting and just whatever else he said um it kind of just got repetitive at some point and it he kind of seemed to use that as the basis for every single question um we even got a less bowen hi nick we got a less bowen hi nick already um and i think that answer ended up in talking about evaluating so it was similar to doug peterson but um yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all I got. Uh, Jeffrey Lurie took way too long to talk. Uh, Nick Sirianni was very, very nervous, as, you know, I would expect his first time in front of the Philly media, but he's going to have to get better at that. Um, but, hey, I'm not going to judge this guy off one press conference. It's not over yet, but I want to see what he does. I want to see the moves that come in. I want to see how this team plans to attack this offseason. That is now the shift in this offseason, and we're going to make another video about this soon. But what are the next steps? I think we got to really build this roster. Um, we got to cut some ties where they are needed. We got to get that cat number down, um, and we got to get some young talent that's going to help us evolve into our future identity. Um, it really seems like with these coaching 
hires, you know, a lot of young guys. It seems like they're letting him choose his own staff. It seems like they're trying to build something for the next four, five years. Um, and we're trying to start somewhere and develop that. A lot of guys with without a lot of experience. Um, so I would expect to see a lot of veterans going uh, this offseason. Um, other than that, oh, yeah, and he referenced Villanova's national championship. Uh, after that, I was a pretty big fan of the guy. As you guys know, I'm a Villanova fan. Um, he was given an example about them, you know, winning the national championship in 2016 on the buzzer beater by Chris Jenkins and how they said, you know, we've gone over this a million times. And he was saying, you know, we got to win throughout the week. We got to plan and prepare and prepare. And then when we get in the game, it should be easier and we should, you know, have a plan of attack. It's not like we're just calling plays like Doug Peterson did off the fly just any play he sees third and two oh I'll call that play oh fourth and one I'll call this play quarterback read <laughs> so overall Nick Sirianni um again he was nervous but I'm hoping he gets better through there on out and look he said some good things but when you read between the lines uh but overall we didn't we weren't going to get much from this anyway and he might get me he might they might make some memes out of Nick Sirianni but hey it's for the better he's got to toughen up in, in, in the city of brotherly love um we got to figure out this quarterback situation. We got to continue to evolve and, and, like he said, evaluate our talent and really get an idea of what we want to do. Um, that's it. Nick Sirianni, new coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me know your thoughts down below. What did you think of this guy's opening presser? Underwhelmed? Overwhelmed? Said just the right things? Let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.